Hello everyone! Welcome to our video series on bringing formative assessment to life in Edmonton Catholic Schools. As we've seen in previous videos of the series, formative assessment is a cycle in which teaching is responsive and learning is informed. Dylan Williams' five key strategies for the formative assessment process can help us focus our technique. Let's look at each strategy in turn. We start by clarifying, sharing, and understanding the learning intentions so that students can monitor their own progress towards the learning goals. We elicit evidence of learning so that we and our students can determine how close they are to that learning goal, provide feedback that moves learners forward, which gives students information on how they can get from where they are to that learning goal, when we activate students' as learning resources for one another, we create a shared responsibility for learning, which provides multiple perspectives and teaches students the value of learning through collaboration. And finally, activating students as owners of their own learning is essential to engagement and motivation to learn. As you watch this video, consider in what ways does the strategy we'll see today demonstrate one or more of William's five strategies for formative assessment? What features of the learning environment and classroom culture do you think contribute to the success of this technique? If you could change one thing about instruction, assessment, and grading in order to improve learning, what would it be and why? And what opportunity do you see for your own practice? Join me as we visit Jennifer Nordhagen's classroom at St. Francis Xavier to learn how to play the snowball game as a formative strategy. My name is Jennifer Nordhagen and I'm a teacher at St. Francis Xavier High School. And I teach where I teach mostly biology, but sometimes a little bit of other things. And today we're gonna to be looking at a snowball activity that I do in my class. If you have a snowball, Are you oxidized or are you reduced? Okay, I am throwing the ball. So I am losing my electron. So as I throw the ball, I am yelling. Oxidation. Ready? And you catch the ball, you are gaining. So you say. <laughs> Got it? You yeah. gotta pay attention. You, you don't throw it at somebody unless you made eye contact. You know that's true, right? <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oxidation reduction snowball fight. Go. So full disclosure, uh, it's not my. I got this idea at teachers' convention, uh, but it's just um, just a way of I bought little snowballs on Amazon. Little fake snowballs. They're just like tiny little balls. And it's just a quick review activity to get the kids um, moving a little bit and saying things out loud and just bringing a little bit of fun into the classroom. A lot of times, especially at the high school level, they like to just be very passive learners. And so I like to use it because it allows for active learning rather than passive learning. And it allows people or it allows the students to actually use scientific language. They're actually saying the words rather than just hearing the words passively. There's so much vocabulary terms to know. So that's why I like it. Um, so I've used this strategy for um, so certain activities or topics where there's like a, a certain flow. So for example, just for an easy example, flow of energy through an ecosystem, right? And so if if there's tossing the balls from one student to the next and they have to they have to be producer, primary consumer, secondary, tertiary, then that what that allows me to see is if they they know what's going on. And that's a simple um, example of something that's easy I can just watch are they if they're catching it they know where they're they're catching it from if they catch a producer then they know that they are throwing it to a primary consumer sort of thing and also it allows me to see 
if they understand the pathways. So it could be something like a negative feedback loop in Bio 30, or it could be pathway through the heart. And so they have to pay attention, where is it coming from? And then where is it going to? So it allows me to see if they kind of have that knowledge in a very informal way, or if it's something I need to go back and reteach. It's more than just like a fun activity or something that's done for just a time filler or nothing, something that doesn't count. It's, it just really allows me to see where the kids are at and gives me feedback as to how I need to go forward with my next lesson. Any subject area that requires knowledge of vocabulary um, would benefit from this activity because you can just put in your term, your definition. And it, it doesn't need to be scientific. It can be poetry terminology in an English class or dates and events in a social studies class. Anytime you want to drive home information, it, I think it could be useful. I think another way it could be useful for multiple subject areas is if you're ever showing cause and effect. This happens, one student could catch it, explain this, and then throw it to the next student. What's an effect of that? And then keep on going, it. and what, then what happened? It would also be good in storytelling, actually. I just thought of that right now, right? So if you had, if you were to write, like, think of a story as a class, and then what happened, and then what happened, and you're just kind of keeping, keeping the ball going. Well, I, th I think there's um, an argument for both, <laughs> but what I love about this activity is it's, it's quick and it's easy, something to do with those last five minutes or the first five minutes of class, and you can quickly get it going, and, and, and people, they have to pay attention, right? If the ball's coming their way, they, they need to know, and they need to listen to the person who's throwing it to them because they need to know what their expectation is. Right. And so it, it just kind of heightens that level of engagement as a little bit of fun. And um, for something like I was teaching oxidation reduction, you know, anytime there's that give and take physically. Right. So if I'm throwing the ball, I'm like losing it. Right. And that's oxidation. So I think it, it also kind of mimics some of those biochemical processes that happen as well. So it's just a little bit, just a little bit extra. Yeah, I would say start simple for sure. Maybe just start with a simple definition and response, definition response, and then work your way up to maybe a sequence of events. So I would say keep it simple at the beginning and then make it more complex as you go. And have fun with it. I always say if, if I'm having fun, then hopefully the kids might catch on with that a little bit and they'll have a little bit more fun too. I think it's not, obviously not like everything, don't overdo it, but sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh, I could have easily have done this. So just, I, I guess, just remember it's a trick that's in your back pocket. And if you have those extra five minutes at the end of class, just go for it and uh, and see how the kids respond to it. And so I think another thing that's important to remember is that the more you do it, the more it becomes a routine. So we don't want to overuse it, but it's it's good to have it part of your routine where, like I said, if you have those five minutes at the end of the day, you just think, oh, we can do this. And instead of wasting that time, it's a quick, fun, easy game to review vocabulary or sequences or whatever whatever it is you, that you've been doing that day. Let's recap how to play the snowball game. First, get some small or medium-sized soft balls, and then decide how you're going to structure the game. Is it going to be for vocabulary acquisition, sequencing, storytelling? You have lots of options. Explain to students the rules of play depending on the structure you've decided, and then give the kids the balls and get them started. And Jennifer's number one tip is to have a routine for a cue to bring the focus back when the game is over. It could be a timer chime or a signal word. 
I'd like to extend an extra special thank you to Jennifer for welcoming me and my camera into her classroom. To learn more, we invite you to visit our SharePoint site for links to these and other resources. And if you have specific questions, feel free to reach out to your assessment and reporting consultant at Lumen Christie Center for Catholic Education. Thanks for watching and have a great day.